forget you. You guys, you can just like my regular class, just like my class during the school year. It's like, hey, can somebody type this into their calculator? <laughs> Stare at me. I actually need your help. I'll do it, guys. I got it. Hold on. Setting the clock. Now I have to set it for nine minutes because I wasted a minute getting my own phone ready. All right? Thanks, guys. Appreciate the help. All right. So, basic rundown again. Your sine function, the inputs are angles. Angles either from the unit circle, right, as we swing around those arc measurements on the unit circle, or angles in a right triangle. Depending on what type of trig we're trying to employ, if we're doing unit circle trig, the outputs are y coordinates. If we're doing right triangle trig, the output could be any ratio of an opposite side over hypotenuse in a right triangle. Now, when it comes to discussing inverse, when you take the inverse of any function and you have points, we essentially flip-flop these. Okay, so we take the outputs, we make them the inputs, and vice versa. So when we discuss inverse sine, so if we say y, uh, uh, y equals the inverse sine of x, if we were to create a table of values for this, we already have everything we need. Our x's are the y's from sine of x, or the outputs, if you will, and our y's, or our outputs, are the inputs of x. Now, what does that mean for our domain and range? This is where things go sideways, if you will, okay? If you just use these values here, okay, as our domain and range, when we talked about, when we talked about sine of x, we said the, the, the domain of a sine function is infinite. Because if you look at the graph, just looking at the graph alone, now that you know what a sine wave looks like, it's gonna go forever and ever and ever in both directions, right? So the domain of sine of x is infinite, right? What is the range? From, from one, negative one to one, okay? So these values will never go below negative one, they will never go above one. What does that mean over here? That means the domain of the inverse sine is from negative one to positive one. So the domain of inverse sine, or sine inverse, however you want to phrase that, is from <coughs> negative one to one. Why? Because now that I'm switching these, now that I'm switching the inputs and the outputs, the inputs and the outputs here are the inputs and the outputs that I listed from the top. Very, very circular uh, description of that. These are either y coordinates or ratios of opposite over hypotenuse sides. That's what I'm inputting here. Because those were the outputs of sine of x, y coordinates, or ratios of opposite over hypotenuse sides. Those become the inputs into the inverse function. The outputs of the inverse function are what? If these are now the inputs into the inverse, what are the outputs of the inverse? The angles. The angles. Okay. And so you're thinking like, oh, so the angles of a unit circle, right? Which are infinite. If you're thinking that, this is where the rub is, okay? This is where there's friction. When you look at this and you're like, well, the domain of this is infinite, so the range of this must also be infinite. That doesn't work. Because this, there, we have this property of inverses when we discuss this way, way back, you know, chapter one material. If a function doesn't pass the horizontal line test, then it doesn't have an inverse. It has to be what we say one to one, right? 
you have to have an exact match for every input can only have one output and only one output per input. So what that means is when you're a one-to-one -one function, you don't, you don't have this same output twice. You can't have that. Now, it passes the vertical line test. It doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So we have to restrict the domain of sine of x to include just a piece of it that does pass the horizontal line test. So what we do, and this is a very long description to get to this idea, the range of values that we will accept for inverse sine is only from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay. So it's not as simple as, oh, the domain is this and the range is this, so we just flip them and we count them here. It doesn't work that way. Okay, it does for the domain, but as far as the range is concerned, no. Our output values are only the angles that fall between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Because if you think about what those angles are, right, the outputs on the unit circle from negative pi over 2, which is here, to positive pi over 2 is here. So we're including every single possible y value on the unit circle. We have them all covered, all the way from negative 1 to positive 1. To include all values from 0 to 2 pi, there'd be redundancy in that, meaning if I found the output to be here, and then I also included the value that was over here, there's redundancy, right? That does, it doesn't fly that way. So we only include the values of y in quadrants 4 and 1 when we're taking the range of this. And you'll see, you'll see how this works once we start doing some examples. Okay? That's a 45-minute lesson in 10 minutes, which is all you get because we have to keep moving. All right? The bottom line is this is key in what we're doing right now. All right? This, the, the domain and range of these values, it's important. All right.